What if his people prayed? Hey guys, get this. Um, I just want to share a little word of encouragement with you. Story from years and years and years ago after I was a pretty new believer, probably a little less than maybe a year in the Lord, if that. And man, I was just so on, top, so on fire for God, just so so much blind faith as a new believer. And God was doing amazing, miraculous things. In fact, I often tell new believers, man, make make the most of this opportunity while you have it. And that first year, you know, really soak up the word, spend time in fellowship with other believers, pray prayers, uh, you know, uh, asking God to help you and, and help others or, you know, what to guide you and strengthen you, encourage you, so on. Because you're kind of like a little infant baby and when you're a brand new believer. And God seems to tend to those new believers uh, and, and, you know, they're, to increase their faith and to help them know that he is their ever-present help in a time of need. But one day my son, who at the time was probably about eight years old, seven years old, and he always had a knack for taking stuff apart. But of course, when he'd go to put it back together, he'd lose a part. In this particular case, he got a, uh, oh, I think it was like, kind of like a Nerf gun, you know, kind of thing that shoots his Nerf darts or, or maybe it was a water gun or something like that. And we were playing with it outside and he took it apart and sure enough, he lost a spring. And I asked him where he lost it and, you know, was it in the grass somewhere? And so I wasn't quite sure. And I thought to myself, well, maybe that's good. Maybe God will teach him a lesson not to take things apart anymore that he can't put back together, you know, to be sure, to count the cost, to think ahead and, you know, so on. But right then the Holy Spirit really convicted me and, and said, no, Daryl, I want to teach him that I am his ever-present help in a time of need and that even some of the stupidest prayers um, even the, for the smallest things, I'm here, I'm listening and I'll help you. And so teach him a lesson that he'll learn and he'll never forget for the rest of his life. So I say, Hey, you know, son, sometimes God wants us to learn to seek him first, to come to him in all things and, you know, to pray to ask for his guidance and so on. So with that, we got on our knees and keep in mind, we'd probably search for that spring for an hour, hour and a half already. And we pray, and I just say a simple prayer, Lord, you know, you know everything. You know the hairs on our head. You know how many stars are in the sky. I mean, you know everything. You created everything. You declare the end from the beginning. You're the amazing, infinitely awesome creator of the whole universe. So please, Lord, I know it seems trivial, but um, in, 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 in a way to help us increase our faith that we know without a doubt that you're here, you're our ever present help in a time of need. Would you just help us find that screen, that little, um, spring. And with that, of course we say, amen and open up our eyes and guess what's laying right on top of the grass, right between us. You got it. The spring. So I hope that encourages you. I know it did him. I was encouraged myself later on in life as a teenager. And I was asking him some hard questions about how do you know that the Bible's true? How do you know Jesus was in a figment of some man's imagination, so on and so forth. And so uh, one of the things he came back with was that time when we prayed for the spring and that he knew that God was real and God was there at that point in time. It left no doubt in his mind. So uh, I hope and pray, even in the small things, you'll come to him quickly and you'll humble yourself. You'll get down on your knees and just say, God, help me. God, lead me. God, strengthen me. God, encourage me. God, uh, equip me and empower me to do all the things you, you require of me that you want from me. Help me serve you. Help me please you. Help me bring forth fruit for you. Whatever it is, help me find a spring. You know, and as long as I think you're doing it, once again, uh, y y y the word says you have not because you ask not, but when you do ask, you ask with the miss. So I, as long as your motive is pure and you're not saying, God, do this for me, do that for me, and it's a matter of comfort or a matter of pleasure or a matter of asking for something that's going to take you farther from God, but just in s some help or some you know guidance, instruction, uh, you know things like that. I know God hears my prayers. I know He'll hear yours too. Uh, just have a clean heart and a clean mind and a clean, you know, pure motive before him. And he is always your ever-present help in a time of need. So, hey, this is Daryl Rundis. Until next time, telling you, I thank God for you. What if his people prayed? Yeah.